feels good. Come up to the fire, lady. I'm not cold. <coughs> now, Mr. Hale, before we move things along, you explain to Mr. Henderson just what you saw when you came in here yesterday. By the way, has anything moved? Are all things here left from yesterday? <coughs> it looks about the same. When I dropped below freezing last night, I thought I'd better send Frank out this morning to make us some fire for us. Nina, with a big cause on, but I told him not to catch anything except the stove. You know, Frank, somebody should have told, should have been here before yesterday. <coughs> oh, yesterday, when I had to send Frank to Morris Center for that man who went crazy. I want you to know I had my hands full yesterday. I knew you could get back from Omaha by today as long as you went over everything here myself. Well, Mr. Hale, just what happened when you came back yesterday? Harry and I started to town with a load of potatoes. We came along the road from my, from my place as I got here and we were starting to see if John Wright could go to the, with me to the party telephone. I spoke to Wright about me once before and he put me off saying folks just talk too much anyway. And all he asked was for peace and quiet. I guess you know about how much he talked to himself, but I thought maybe if I went to the house and talked about it to his wife, though I said to Harry that I didn't know as what his wife wanted made such a difference to John. Let's talk about that later. Mr. Hale, I do not want to talk about that. I do, but tell you now just what happened when you got to the house. Okay. I didn't hear or see anything. I knocked at the door and still it was all quiet inside. I knew they must be up. It was past eight o'clock. So I knocked again and I thought I heard someone say, come in. I wasn't sure. I'm not sure yet, but I opened the door. This door. And there in that rocker sat Mrs. Wright. What was she doing? She was rocking back and forth. She had her apron on in her hand and was kind of pleading it. And how did she look? Well, she looked queer. How do you mean queer? Well, as if she didn't really know what she was going to do next and kind of done up. How did she seem to feel about your coming? Why, I don't think she minded one way or another. She didn't pay much attention, I said. How, how do, Miss Wright, it's cold, ain't it? And she said, is it? And went on kind of pleading at her apron. Well, I was surprised. She didn't ask to come up to the stove or to sit, sit down, but just sat there not even looking at me. So I said, I want to see John. And then she laughed. I guess you would call it a laugh. I thought of Harry and the team outside. So I said a little sharp, can't I see John? No, she said, kind of dull like. Ain't he home, says I? Yes, says she, he's home. Then why can't I see him? I asked her out of patience. Cause he's dead, says she. Dead, says I. She just nodded her head, not getting a bit excited, but rocking back and forth. Why? Where is he, says I, not knowing what to say. She just pointed upstairs. I started for the stairs, with the idea of going up there. I walked from there to here, then I says, Why, what did he die of? He died of a rope round his neck, says she and just went on pleading at her apron. Well, I went out and called Harry. I thought I might need help. We went upstairs, and there he was, lying. I think I'd rather have you go up into that upstairs where you could point it all out. Just go on now with the rest of the story. Well, my first thought was to get that rope off. But Harry, well, he went up to him and he said, no, he's dead all right. We better not touch anything, so we went downstairs and she was sitting the same way. Has anybody been notified, I asked. No, she said weirdly. Who, 
did this, Mrs. Wright, said Harry. She said it like business-like so she wouldn't trip. I don't know, she says. You don't know, says Harry. No, says she. Weren't you sleeping in bed with him, says Harry. Yes, he says. But I was on the, the inside. Somebody slipped a rope around his neck and strangled him. You don't know who killed him? And you didn't wake up, says Harry. I didn't wake up, she said after him. He must have looked as if we didn't see how that could be. For after a minute, she said, I sleep sound. Harry was going to ask her one more question. But I said, maybe we ought to let her tell the story first to the coroner or the sheriff. So Harry went fast as he could to the Rubik's place where there's a telephone. And what did Miss Wright do when she knew that he had gone for the coroner? She moved from this rocker to this chair. And just sat there with her hands held together. I got a feeling I ought to make some conversation. So I said I had to come see if Don wanted to put in a telephone. And that she started to laugh. And then she stopped and looked at me, scared. I don't know, maybe it wasn't scared. I wouldn't like to say it was. Soon Harry got back and then Dr. Lloyd came and you and Miss Judith. And so I guess that's all I know that you don't. I guess we'll go upstairs first and then out to the ball and around there. You're convinced that there's nothing important here? Nothing that would point to a motive? Nothing? Nothing here but a kitchen. Nothing here but kitchen stuff. Or a refrigerator. Nothing here. Oh, what a mess. Oh, her fruit? It did freeze. She worried about that when it turned so cold. She said the fire go out and her jars would break. Well, can you beat the woman? Hell for murder and worrying about her preserves. Well, I guess before we're through, she might have something more serious than preserves to worry about. Well, women are used to worrying over trifles. And yet, for all their worries, what would we do without the ladies? Oh, dirty towels. Not much of a housekeeper, would you say, ladies? There's a great deal of work to be done on a farm. Oh, to be sure. And yet, I know there are some Dickinson County farmhouses which do not have such roller rook towels. Those towels get dirty awful quick. Men's hands aren't as clean as they might be. Ah, loyal to your sex, I see. But you and Mrs. Wright were neighbors. I, I suppose you were friends, too. I've not seen much of her of late years. I've not been in this house. It's more than a year. Mm, uh, and why was that? You, uh, you didn't like her? I liked her all well enough. Farmers' wives have their hands full, Mr. Henderson. And then... Yes? It never seemed a very cheerful place. No, it's not cheerful. I shouldn't say she had the homemaking instinct. Well, I don't know, as Wright had either. Uh, you mean that they, um... They didn't get on very well? No, I don't mean anything. But I don't think a place would be any cheerfuler for John Wright's being in it. Mm. I, I'd, ta I'd like to talk uh, more about that a little later. I want to get the lay of things upstairs now. I suppose anything Mrs. Peters does will be all right. She was to take in some clothes for her, you know, and a few little things we left in such a hurry yesterday. Mm, yes, but... uh. I would like to see what you take, uh, Mrs. Peters, and keep an eye out for uh, anything that might be a use to us. Yes, Mr. Henderson. I hate to have a man come into my kitchen snooping around and criticizing. Of course, it's no more than their duty. Duty is all right, but I guess that deputy sheriff that came out to make the fire might have got a little of this on. We should have thought about that sooner. Seems mean to talk about her for not having things slicked up when she had to come away in such a hurry. She had bread set. She was going to put this in there. It's a shame about her fruit. I wonder if it's all gone. I think there's some here that's all right. Mrs. Peters, yes, here. Oh, this is cherries too. I declare, I believe that's the only one. She'll feel awfully bad after all. 
her hard work in the hot weather. I remember the afternoon I put up my cherries last summer. Well, I must get those things from the front room closet. You coming, Mrs. Hale? You could help me carry them. My, it's cold in there. Wright was close. I think maybe that's why she kept so much to herself. She didn't even belong to the ladies' aid. I suppose she felt she couldn't do her part. And then you don't enjoy things when you feel shabby. I heard she used to wear pretty clothes and be lively when she was a mini foster. One of those town girls singing in the choir. But that, oh, that was 30 years ago. This all you want to take in? She said she wanted an apron. Funny thing to want, for there isn't much to get you dirty in jail. Goodness knows but I suppose just to make her feel more natural. She said they was in the top drawer of this cupboard. Yes, here. And then her shawl that was always hung behind the door. Yes, here it is. Miss Peters. Yes, Miss Hale? Do you think she did it? Oh, um, uh, I, I don't know. Well, I don't think she did. Asking for an apron and her little shawl, worrying about her fruit. Mr. Peters says it looks bad for her. Mr. Henderson is awful sarcastic in his speech, and he'll make fun of her for saying she didn't wake up. Well, I guess John Wright didn't wake when they was slipping that rope under his neck. No, it's strange. It must have been done awful crafty. And still, they say it was such a funny way to kill a man, rigging it all up like that. That's just what Mr. Hale said. There was a gun in the house. He says that's what he can't understand. Mr. Henderson said coming out that what was needed for the case was a motive, something to show anger or sudden feeling. Well, I don't see any signs of anger around here. It's wiped to here. Wonder how they are finding things upstairs. I hope she had a little more red up there. You know, it seems kind of sneaking, locking her up in town and then coming out here and trying to get her house to turn against her. But, Mrs. Hale, the law is the law. I, I suppose it is. Better loosen up your things, Miss Peters. You won't feel them when you go out. She was piercing a quilt. <laughs> they wonder if she's going to quilt it or not it. Frank's fire didn't do much up here, did it? Well, let's go out of the barn and get them cleared up. I don't know as there's anything so strange our taking up our time with little things while we're waiting for them to get the evidence. I don't see it as anything they'll laugh about. Of course they got awful important things on their mind. Of course they got awful important things on their mind. Miss Peters, look at this one here. This is the one she was working on. Oh, and, and look at the sewing. All the rest of it's been so nice and even. And look at this. It's all over the place. Well, it looks like if she didn't know what she was about. Oh, and what are you doing, Miss Hale? Oh, just pulling out a stitch or two. That's not sewed very good. But that sewing's always made me fidgety. Oh, I, I, I don't think we ought to touch things. I'll just finish up this end. Miss Peters? Yes, Miss Hale. What do you suppose she was so nervous about? Oh, I don't know. I don't know as she was nervous. I sometimes see awful queer when I'm just tired. Well, I must get these things wrapped up. They must be the, through the door sooner than we think. I wonder where I can find a piece of paper and string. Why, here's a bird cage. Did she have a bird, Miss Hale? Why, I don't know whether she did or not. I've not been here for so long. There was a man around last year selling canaries cheap, but I don't know if she took one. Maybe she did. She used to sing real pretty herself. Seems funny to think of a bird here, but she must have had one, or why would she have a cage? I wonder what happened to it. I suppose maybe the cat got it. No, she didn't have a cat. 
She's got that feeling some people have about cats, being afraid of them. My cat got in her room and she was real upset and asked me to take it out. My sister Bessie was like that. Queer, ain't it? Why, look at this door. It's broke. One hinge is pulled apart. Looks as if someone has been rough with it. Why, yes. I wish if they were going to find any evidence, they'd be about it. I don't like this place. But I'm awful glad you came with me, Miss Hale. It would be lonesome for me sitting here alone. It would, wouldn't it? But I tell you what I do wish, Miss Peters. I wish I had come over here sometimes when she was here. I... I wish I had. But of course, you were awful busy, Miss Hale. Your house and your children. I could have come. I stayed away because it weren't cheerful. And that's why I ought to have come. I... I've never liked this place. Maybe because it's down in a hollow and you don't see the road. I don't know what it is, but it's a lonesome place and always was. I wish I had come over to see Minnie Foster sometimes. I can see now. Well, you mustn't reproach yourself, Miss Hale. Somehow we just don't see how it is with other folks until something turns up. Not having children makes less work, but it makes quite a house and bright out to work all day and no company when he did come in. Do you know John Wright, Miss Peters? Not to know him. I seen him in town. They say he was a good man. Yes, good. He didn't drink, and he kept his word well as most, I guess, and paid his debts. But he was a hard man, Mrs. Peters. Just to pass the time of day with him, like a raw wind gets you to the bone. I should think she would have wanted a bird, but what do you suppose went with it? I don't know, unless she got sick and died. You weren't raised around here, were you? You didn't know her? Not till they brought her yesterday. She, (laughs) come to think of it, she was kind of like a bird herself. Real sweet and pretty, but kind of timid and fluttery how she did change (sighs) tell you what mrs peters why don't you take the quilt in with you it might take up her mind well i think that's a real nice idea mrs hale there could not possibly be objection to it but just what would i take wonder if her patches are in here and her things here's some red I expect this box has sewing things in it. <laughs> what a pretty box. It looks like something somebody would give you. Maybe her scissors are in here. Wow. There's something wrapped up in this piece of silk. Wow, this isn't her scissors. Oh, Mrs. Peters, it's... It's the bird. But Mrs. Peters, look at it. It's neck. Look at its neck. It's all other side, too. Somebody wrung its neck. (gasps) Well, ladies, have you decided whether she was going to quilt it or knot it? We think she was going to knot it. Well, that's interesting, I'm sure. Has the bird flown? We think the cat got it. Is there a cat? Well, not now. They're superstitious, you know? They leave. No sign at all of anyone having come from the outside. Their own rope. Now let's go up again and go over it piece by piece. She liked that bird. She was going to bury it in that pretty box. When I was a girl, my kitten, there was a boy, took a hatchet before my eyes, before I could get there. If they hadn't held me back, I would have hurt him. I wonder how it would seem never to have had any children around. No, right 
wouldn't like the bird. The thing that sang. She used to sing. He killed that too. We don't know who killed the bird. I knew John Wright. It was an awful thing was done in this house that night. Miss Hale, killing a man while he slept, slipping a rope around his neck that choked the life out of him? His neck choked the life out of him. We don't know who killed him. We don't. If there have been years and years of nothing, then a bird sings to you, it would be awful. Still, after the bird was still, I know what stillness is. When we homesteaded in Dakota, and my first baby died, after he was two years old, and me, with no other then. How soon do you suppose they'll be looking for the evidence? I know what silence is. The law has got to punish crime, Miss Hale. I wish you'd seen Minnie Foster when she wore a white dress with blue ribbons and stood up there in choir and sang. Oh, I wish I'd come over here once in a while. That was a crime. That was a crime. Who's going to punish that? We mustn't take on. I might have known she needed help. I know how things can be for women. I tell you, it's queer, Miss Peters. We live close together and we live far apart. We all go through the same things. It's all just different kind of the same things. If I was you, I wouldn't tell her her fruit was gone. Tell her it ain't. Tell her it's all right. Take this and to prove it to her. She, she may never know whether it was broke or not. Am I? It's a good thing the men couldn't hear us. Why don't they just laugh? Getting all stirred up over a little thing like a dead canary. As if that could have anything to do with it. Wouldn't they laugh? Maybe they would. Maybe they wouldn't. No, Peters. It's all perfectly clear, except the reason for doing it. But you know, jurors, when it comes to women, if there was some definite thing, something to show, something to make a story about, a thing that would connect up with this strange way of doing, Well, I've got the team around. Pretty cold out there. I'm going to stay a while by myself. You can send Frank out for me, can't you? I want to go over everything. I'm not satisfied that we can't do better. Do you want to see what Miss Peters is going to take in? Oh, I guess they're not very dangerous things the ladies have picked out. No, Miss Peters doesn't need supervising. For that matter, a sheriff's wife is married to the law. Everything was that way, Miss Peters? No. Just that way. <laughs> married to the law. I just want you to come in here a minute, George. We ought to take a look at these windows. Oh, windows! We'll be right out, Miss Hale. Well, Henry, at least we found out that she was not going to quilt it. She was going to, what is it you call it, ladies? We call it, not it, Mr. Henderson. <laughs> 